Week five of the NFL season has wrapped up. It's Jason Rubin, I'm Rick Strom. Uh, toiks and joiks of the weekend. Jason Rubin, let's start with your, on a high note, Turk of the weekend. Turk of the weekend. Who do you have? Uh, Aaron Rodgers, probably. I mean, look, there's a lot of, there's a lot that happened in week five of the NFL. That's the most blanket boring ass statement I've ever said on this show. But what, what was I was that? telling Rick, on Sunday after the Packers game was I texted uh, 12 why why ever give Aaron Rodgers the ball I have the final drive actually which is a, a the Packers final drive awesome. because I actually think you can place this a couple times a year every year and it looks exactly like this the my favorite part about Aaron Rodgers is his trust for uh, Devonta Adams and his trust for a lot of his receivers because he's all he's obviously got that by the way, he did this without Jordy Nelson. So again, yeah, and we're gonna get point. into a whole thing about why the Packers are a bad football team led by the greatest quarterback or the second greatest quarterback of all time, um, depending on which way you look at it. But goes short right to Adams, who's pushed out the Green Bay for 14 yards, another short right to Bennett for 14 yards. And he also scrambles to get the first down, uh, which also put him in the field goal range. He knew he had more, a little bit more time left. He knows exactly how to manage the clock. I don't think Mike McCarthy knows how to manage the clock. I just know that Rodgers does. But the best part was on third and eight at the Dallas, uh, uh, I'm sorry, on first and 10 at the Dallas 12, he throws it a little bit be uh, behind Devonta Adams, which could have actually been intercepted. He was playing defense at that point. And Devonta Adams comes back as he was telling Aaron Andrews after the, after the game. And he said, yeah, Devonta Adams came back to me and said, let's just run it back. And he said, okay, I won't miss it. I won't miss that throw a second time. You give me two shots at that same play. If you're gonna do single coverage, I'm gonna beat you on that play. Uh, clean routes, by the way, Devonta Adams. Very clean. My God, uh, at the line of scrimmage, his footwork Rogers, is incredible. What Rodgers does, and you can use the Super Bowl argument, which is a good argument. He hasn't been able to win as many Super Bowls, but here's the problem with that sole argument. It's actually an almost, ne almost, almost never been Aaron Rodgers' fault. Uh, the regular season has almost never been Aaron Rodgers' fault. The guy consistently puts up 25 plus points for his team and gets you into the position of leading an offense. And the defense gives up at least 30. In his playoff losses, almost every single one of them, the defense has given up more than like 25, 26, 27, 28 points. Um, sometimes upwards of 40. Sometimes he has to win in shootouts, but he has to put up 50. But the thing I don't understand, you're the Cowboys. You know, as you have seen, not just in the playoffs, but in the regular season, that if you give Aaron Rodgers the ball back with a minute and 20 and he only needs to go 25 uh -huh. yards to tie a football game, why aren't you handing the ball off? I get it, because you want to take that touchdown to get the lead, but not against Aaron Rodgers. Their weakest part, the best way to play the Packers is to keep Aaron Rodgers off the field as long as possible. You got to Andy Reid ball hog it for 44 minutes a game. Right, you, you have to do to the run. opposite of a mob Bradshaw in the Super Completely. Bowl. Completely, yeah. you, you have to sit on the one yard line, sit on you the gotta one. sit on the half yard line. Take the play clock down to, or excuse me, the, uh, 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 what clock am I? The play clock, you're gonna, the, yeah, the, the play clock. Take, the play it down clock. Down, take it down to one second. You're talking about the Packers defense here. You're gonna score on them. You're gonna get a touchdown when you have Ezekiel Elliott and Dak Prescott, and sure, Des Bryant as a red zone target is, is still viable. Red uh, Des Bryant as a downfield target is probably not so viable. Um, and Cole Beasley is having a hell of a game. You're going to be able to score the Packers defense. It's amazing how the Don't best give it back to the best Aaron defense Rogers. the Packers had was when Charles Woodson was a veteran, and he maybe had like two years left, and he didn't even play in the Super Bowl because he got hurt yeah, in the true. Super Bowl. But that's their Charles defense Woodson's, has never been he's great. He's such a high IQ. He's a high IQ player, and like the their rush the defense has been okay, but their pass defense is. Horrible because Clay Matthews is now a little over the hill. They've fallen off a it's cliff not defensively. Just a, it's not even just a Clay Matthews. It was so amazing to me is that they've the team is just not that good. They really yeah. are a middle of the road team. Yeah, I'm buying what you're selling. Like here's here's what I'm very very certain of. If the Packers have Josh McCown or Brian Hoyer as their quarterback, oh, I, I will not be sold that they win eight games and they do not win the division. Say Joe ever. Flacco even. The Lions would tear them up for f sake. The Bears would get wins in Green Bay if you didn't have to face Aaron fucking Rodgers. Again, yes, that's the I problem. Agree. Here's my genuine fear. Here's my genuine fear. I believe. <laughs> I partially believe. 
Watch Bill Belichick somehow lure Aaron Rodgers like the day after Tom Brady retires. He'd be like, no, no just give me Aaron Rodgers for five years. No, I think he's gonna stay at Packer for the rest of his life. Yes. But if he doesn't, he's gonna go play for the Patriots, where if he did have a head coach that doesn't get bailed out by his greatness. All right. Don, you have a better be, chance of Colin this, Kaepernick playing quarterback no, than Aaron Rodgers play. playing he's not allowed quarterback. To play quarterback in the NFL if you didn't know that. Uh, uh, so that's it. Aaron Rodgers yeah. is the Turk of the Year. Uh, the uh, Turk of the Week for me is the Kansas City Chiefs. Hey. Not the team, but the organization. Oh. <laughs> You didn't see that one coming. Nope. From an organizational organizational standpoint, they let go of Scott Pioli like two weeks before the season, and they hired a new GM. They cut Jeremy Macklin, and Jeremy. they have now found so many other weapons. Uh, they lost Travis Kelsey in last night's game against a good Houston Texans team. All of them are named Hunt, by the way. What do you mean? The owner is a Hunt. There is Kareem Hunt, and there's Akeem Hunt. You're forgetting the best one. This uh, safety Hunt. out of uh, uh, Texas Tech named Mike Hunt. I know, I was gonna say, I was gonna say Mike Hunt. <laughs> Mike Hunt, great player. Sorry. Uh, they uh, let go of Jamal Charles, they let go of Dontari Poe, and yet I know. they're five and out. I like Dontari Poe. I, I love Dontari Poe. Still frauds, Do you even know what team he's with now? Yes. Oh, come on. I just fucking said it. I had to look this up because I forgot. No, I do know. And this is the. Uh, I'm gonna lose if my If Mary's mind. here, she needs to meme this out, right? Go back. Yeah, yeah, you gotta mean this. I now. said it yes. My friend goes, man, Don Terry Poe's really clogging up. On Sunday Night Football, he's watching. He's like, man, no one's getting through Don Terry, but like, Don Terry Poe's not a chief anymore. No. He's, not, he's a. The team based with red. Two hours later. The Buccaneers? Nope. Approximately 10 hours later. Why can't I remember this? It's the Atlanta Falcons, Jason. Thank so you. he's with uh, the Atlanta Falcons. They've lost. Bart's like, yeah, that's that's the team. Uh, and Alex Smith is 5 and 0 and he has so almost mad. a 77 percent completion percentage. I don't know what is going on with this team, but they're put they're, they're like Joe Madden happy. in the playoffs. They're not like, happy. I'm just gonna push some buttons. He and was see not what happy Patrick Mahomes was uh, picked up as a uh, who by the way can throw a ball 70 yards uh, in the air. But uh, the question is, can frauds. he pull a Jamarcus Russell and throw it 70 yards from his knee? They're still that was Cardell Joe. The Chiefs can go 16 and 0, and I would bet heavy on the Patriots to beat him in the playoffs, or the Broncos, or the Raiders. Of course, but we're talking regular season right now. We're talking Turk of the Week, Kansas yeah. City Chiefs. Uh, your Jerk of the They're Week. They're the best team on both sides of the ball. Week five, point. Jerk of the Week. Uh, jerk. Oh, Jerk of the Week. Oh, the Jerk of the Week. I don't the even jerk know of the I week, thought Chase. of a Jerk of the Week. Besides uh, Joe Girardi for how he's managing the oh, Yankees. So uh, you can go back to your Jerk of the Week. Thank you for that segue. Yeah. So my jerk of the week is going to be uh, one Cameron Newton. So this Cam is uh, graphic one and two. Cam Here is the hat that he rocked. Now, if you're looking at that like uh, Yetzel Pretzel is to my right, that is Rosie the Riveter. All right. Now you're probably thinking, wait a minute, why is he on that Abe Lincoln hat that Cam is wearing? Graphic three and four, here are the quotes on why he did it. And this is via Cam Newton and the Detroit Free Press. I was trying to find a way to kind of hint a notion to all the women. I did my homework on her and her impact on World War II. And not only her, but all the women and females who played a big impact in creating equipment for World War II. Hmm, okay. And then graphic four, going back to this previous, uh, to last week, uh, and this is again via the Detroit Free Press when he criticized a female reporter asking him a question about Devin Funches running routes. Quote, it's Funches funny to hear Funches. a female talk about routes, like it's funny. And then he went yeah. on to answer, hang on real quick. So what I personally don't like about this is that you're trying so hard to show that you care when really all you have to do is just say the right things, not display the right things. It's sort of like someone saying, uh, let, let's say, for example, it's like someone dropping a racial slur and then putting on their uh, having a printed t shirt of whatever ethnicity that they offended and saying, see, I care. No, dude, we're not buying it. This is bullshit. This is you trying to save face when really you already couldn't because you lost. I know that you've been dropped by sponsors and you're getting replaced by okay. Dak or you're not, yada, yada, yada. It doesn't matter. The fact that he tried this hard to be like, see, I care, it doesn't work like that, dude. Get a grip. So, uh, jerk of the week, Cam Newton. I Disagree slightly. I get your point. Slightly, of, slightly, because I get you're, your. I you're get your point. You're splitting hairs. Then. I know, but I get your point. Like uh, on trying for one. Like what was the one thing that I preferably <sighs> wanted him to do? And since he did it, apologize. Good, you're done. You passed. You you had a nice heartfelt apology. The Twitter it's, video. It sound, yeah, it sounded yep. like you were 
pretty the serious. The sound quality about it. was terrible, by the way. It's, it's, he was to terrible. the point, though, Rick. Is that like he he? What are we supposed to do as a society when someone makes a mistake like Cam Newton and they apologize? We're supposed to crucify him for the rest of his no, career? No, of course not. No, but so he wears the Rose of the River. First of all, for of all people to do it, I'm not surprised it's Cam Newton. I don't think there's really anything too wrong with him doing it because he is an outlandish style guy. Uh -huh. It would be the same as if Russell Westbrook did the same thing. It wouldn't be out of the ordinary no, for no, Russell no, Westbrook no, no, to no, wear no. something. He could wear what wear he could wear whatever stylish. he wants. But to his quote, How did that just to happen? his quote. I get it. It's a little bit of a try hard thing. I'm not going to disagree yeah, with completely. you there. But I'm not going to call it bullshit and say that you already lost. He made he corrected his wrong. Now that he's corrected his wrong, it's I wrong agree. of us to just continue to criticize him. No. It's wrong of us to continue no. to criticize him because for one, he already got the backlash of it. He lost the sponsorship and uh -huh. by that it wasn't really that somebody dropped him from being a sponsor. They didn't renew a contract of all things, which is hilarious, which is a yogurt sponsorship. Um, because I do like as Stephen Colbert said, I loved watching Cam eat yogurt. <laughs> it's just a funny thing. I was surprised Cam knew he'd eat yogurt. Was I think what Colbert said? But at the same time, he corrected his wrong. So now Cam's being yeah, Cam. corrected his wrong. And you well, don't you don't have to I try know, and once, do this and bring attention again, to it, yourself to say, see, I get it. I understand women. Right? That's stupid, Jason. I, that is beyond he, dumb. He said he said, look, I'm not gonna go back to piling on criticism for Cam Newton. The guy gets again unfairly criticized for yes, we agree on that. Does, and but here I think he can't get criticized un, enough for un, doing this. I think you're it's a charade. I think you're unfairly criticizing him. As being part of the uh -huh. media, and you're falling into the same trap that no, 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 no. Now, and now, over now and you're and generalizing me as being a member of the media who simply stirs up a storyline without being a free-thinking individual, which is exactly what I'm doing. I saw, I call it as I see it, as I always do. I see him as trying way, way, way too hard in this instance. We agree that he gets unfairly criticized, i.e., Super Bowl. 50 and and a lot of press Super Bowl 50 before that. I think he's always been unfairly criticized simply by being a black quarterback in America. It comes with many many things. However, in this one instance, one instance, he is completely wrong and he is trying way 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 too hard. By the way, do you have a jerk of the week or do you just want to associate with Ken Mangowitz <laughs> is my jerk of the week for fuck's sake. Uh Oh, Jerry Jones is the fucking jerk of the week. Oh, well, thank you. Uh, here's actually, that's what I did want to mention really quick uh, before we get into the UFC stuff. Um, and it's, I promise you, nothing to do with the political aspect. Jerry Jones said that anybody who kneels to the national anthem won't be a Dallas Cowboy. I urge of you, I urge you, Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, specifically Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott, and possibly Des Bryant. And the reason being is I want you to call the bluff that is Jerry Jones because he's completely full of shit. What Jerry Jones wants to say is, if you are expendable and you kneel for the national anthem, you cannot play because truthfully, I'm a money grabbing racist. If you are my star quarterback or my star running back, I'm sure we can make a way this for all of this to work out. So I urge, I really do beg of Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott not just to take a knee. I think you should do something even more, more polarizing if it means it would show your owner, who I get it, does say, does cut your paycheck? I understand that, but it's just BS. Don't stand for that. Don't stand for Jerry Jones. You have the freedom of speech to do what you want, and you are fortunately in a position where you are good enough that Jerry Jones will not cut you. Right. There's so no you, way in hell. Exactly. And much like Jerry Jones, Cam Newton also went out and made a, a symbolic gesture to write something he had done in the past. And we're not saying it wasn't the right intent or he wasn't trying to do something positive, but it just fell short. It fell short. It wasn't it wasn't the sincere understanding of saying something wrong. It was exactly as Rick had said. It was just, hey, look, I have I have black friends after I said something racist. Get it? It's 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 a very face value thing, similar to Jerry right. Jones kneeling on the sideline. Like, yeah, it looks good for photos, but it was a PR stuff. It's a PR thing. It's a PR thing. You're yes. not really trying to understand. You're not really changing your position. You're just throwing, you know, a hat on. So he, I, I agree. Um, to Jason's point. What is the worst that is going to come of Jerry Jones being mad at Dak Prescott for kneeling? Nothing. I'm, I'm going to go out on double, a limb here a and say he's going to get a stern talking to. You know, it's a double like, standard. Oh, don't it's do double that standard. again. That's Respect our flag. If like some, if Cole Beasley does it, peace, brother. Not <laughs> like, Cole Beasley. Cole Beasley. 
Sorry, you're not Ezekiel Elliott. <laughs> he, can't, he can't go anywhere. He's actually, racking up fantasy chance, points. There's a, there's a chance that, uh, that, no offense to Cole Beasley, he actually had two big touchdowns yesterday in the game. Um, He's Ezekiel, a good player. Ezekiel, yeah, he is a good He's player. A good Ezekiel play. Elliott uh, uh, is possibly not playing for the rest of the season because of that it's suspension or like those six, seven, whatever it's supposed to be. Right, but the, the point is, is, the point is, show Jerry Jones who's boss. Show him. It would really display some sort of, <laughs> to not use an NFL word with their propaganda, but unity uh, among the star players for the Dallas Cowboys to simply stand up or rather kneel for what they believe in and not be strong-armed by a rich old white guy.